For you people out there who have, uh, so many of you have written, and we did not have the office <coughs> help to write everyone back personally, so I'll take this opportunity to point out all those who have requested that we do uh, some sort of form of a uh, biography of Cairo. It was literally in the works, and then we found out that for whatever reason, Warner Brothers had decided to try and actually get back full blast into the movie making business. And it turns out that they are putting together a combination. They're bringing, starting back up their uh, animation department, and they're trying to bring back Daffy Duck, and they're going to combine it, and they're going to do him and doing the life of Buddha. <laughs> And so <clears throat> most, most of us here have decided that we would really be going against the cultural grain trying to swim upstream at this particular time. Not saying we won't do it in the future, but trying to come out with some sort of presentation of Kairu's life. So I'll keep you informed. And Kairu said, I'm trying to go through some of the ones requested additional comments. Weird. <clears throat> and Kairut said, the sleep of giants, which is in quotation marks, is always revealed by the mark of footprints on the pillows. That's the first page, and I'm not going to break our precedent by coming on one that soon in the sequence. <laughs> but just think of, it's a short one, think of the words yourself, the sleep of giants, and whatever that is, can always be identified is always revealed by the fact that you have the mark of footprints on the pillow. <laughs> and Kairut said, genes are more important to those of a genetic disposition than anyone else. We did not, as appears, have as many requests tonight, and so we're, of course, you can't depend on them all being hit anyway, but there is a string, as I was sitting there listening with the rest of you, a string going through tonight of which this was one part, or a tapestry of which this was one string. Because at the surface, of course, you could say, well, this is either ridiculous I don't guess it's right, but it actually qualifies a non sequitur. But you can just say what's well, silly, it really makes no sense, that genes are more important to those with genetic disposition than anyone else. That's true and it's not true. Because to begin with, the more that you are civilized, the more that you're living in the secondary world, although this may be true, the more you would deny it. Because the more you would be searching for, the more that there was one denied about those who are seeking psychological answers are not actually seeking answers. That's not, as you know, this show's not an attack anyway. If it is, it's failing. <laughs> it's not an attack on people. But if you are seeking psychological answers, you know, why is humanity so hostile in my neighborhood? Which is always nice to localize it. Like, you mean, after 3,000 years of recorded history, we suddenly have some violence, some uncouth behavior in your neighborhood? Where do you live? This mark, <laughs> put, this on, put this on a map. I was actually, would say somebody, I live over in the fifth ward, and I was actually, I was in a store, and somebody came in. I don't even think they're from our country. Well, anyway. And the person insulted me. Well, that's Mark. Get out of some kind of, one of these full, long charts. Is, you know, they got the recorded history of humanity. And plus, of course, they're in the back seat acting a little queasy. Don't fool Randy McNally. Find somebody else, but get a map to go with this and pinpoint where this person lives. And the fact, get the time, the date, you know, if they can come up with the time, roughly, that somebody actually insulted them because what in the world is the world coming to? <laughs> so if they're seeking psychological answers, which, again, you've got to realize, the more that you're up to date, the more it's not an attack whatsoever, but the more that you are ordinary and civilized, the more you seek for psychological answers. Such as this. If we go back in a time zone, a simultaneous type time zone that's in your nervous system as we've been through, that's in the nervous system of the fifth ward, that will assume it's multiple social and financial housing 
We've got everything from housing projects and shacks and people living in trailers and abandoned septic tanks to two nice homes. Y'all living there together the same way that is in, believe it or not, your nervous system. That I'm sure you have some fine people living in Goose Point or whatever they call it. Oh, all right, Connecticut. And Grossy, that's enough joke. You've got people living in your nervous system in the suburbs and the high-class areas of Connecticut, and you have people, believe it or not, living in your nervous system in Alabama with two or three rusted cars jacked up in the front yard <laughs> and pink flamingos that weren't even pink to begin with. Somebody painted them. You've got all that. So if we were at the level of the people with the pink flamingos in your nervous system and they were in a store and somebody insulted them, are they just simply reflecting, if people like that reflect, according to you know, how much you wax them, I guess. But. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way you're going to get somebody from Mississippi to reflect. Now, they might ruminate, perhaps in one of the alternate definitions in the dictionary, but they're not given a whole lot to reflect on. But neither for that point are people in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, if you're going to get smart about it. But at any rate, if you took somebody at that level and you said, all right, the world is... Uh, probably getting worse. People are just, they've got less respect on the highways, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I mean, they'll push you around in the store and break in line, yeah, 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 and people will get in line where it says 10 items or less, and they know damn well they got a dozen or more. Right? <laughs> but if you ask that kind of person, if you ask a good, if you ask a good primary base person, a good bricklayer, why are people like that? And his response is going to be something like, well, most people know damn good. Now, that is uncivilized. Am I correct? And you would tell you for what it was worth. You go, well, they'd just say something, well, they'd probably be worse. They'd probably find some racial or religious. They'd probably find something, you know, if you said be more specific, they probably would. They'd say, well, the person acted like they're a damn Yankee. They're some kind of foreigner, probably name a Baptist. And that would be the basis of what's wrong. You know, why individually did this happen? Well, the guy looked like he was some kind of foreigner. And then if you get their view spread out just a little bit and say, well, historically, socially right now, isn't life worse? Isn't, aren't people more uncivilized, pushy, less courteous than they were when you were growing up? Yeah, that's true. Well, why? I mean, what psychological or what sociological ramifications, impacts are going on? Well, people just know damn good. They're just getting worse. That's what's wrong. You know, the world's going to hell. Everybody knows that. What's wrong with you? What are you, a Yankee asking these kind of questions? If you're civilized, you know that that is not a proper response. If you're just ordinary, because you are supposed to be looking. You are supposed to be looking for psychological answers. You're supposed to be. That's correct. If you're ordinary, living in the city, you're supposed to be saying, well, let's say that a, a more civilized person, the guy from Connecticut in your nervous system, is standing nearby while you're <coughs> discussing that part with the uh, guy from Tuscaloosa or Gulfport, and he's the one saying, well, I'll tell you why life is getting worse. I mean, what kind of question is Are you dumb? People are just, people are worse. Most people are just, most people are just no good. So if you had the guy here that was a little more civilized in your nervous system, or actually out here, and you said, did you hear that? He go, yeah. And he would be correct. If you said, well, you know, what's your impression of this? The guy would say something like, well, the man's obviously uh, probably ill-educated. You probably, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he, did not flunk out of high school. He's probably a very parochial, literally. He's probably never been out of the state. And you'd say all that, and you'd say, well, and then if you say, well, how about his attitude when we ask, well, do you feel like society is sort of coming apart and things are less stable, less civilized than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago when you were a child? And he goes, yes. And did you hear what, when I asked him, well, you know, why you think? And he just said, well, people are no good. People are getting worse. <laughs> And your part from Connecticut would go, you know, your part of the people in the penthouse go, well, I heard that. And then that person would say, and that fits just what I was saying. No offense to the man, but I'm sure that he is local. I'm sure he's never been around. Uh, has very little education. If he watches, uh, probably doesn't read. I doubt if he's very literate. And if he watches TV, which I guess he does, I'm sure he doesn't watch PBS or he doesn't watch news shows. And so it all fits. And so if you ask this person from Connecticut in your nervous system, well, what, what would be your response? Then they would say something like, all right, on an individual level, 
I'm sure that we could find some psychological traumas of some nature. They're still psychologically, uh, subconsciously trying to work themselves out about this individual that he said broke in line to him. And plus, he said he looked like he was a foreigner, maybe from another country. Uh, it's very, it's very easy. Would say the guy from Connecticut, the guy in the penthouse, somebody of a more secondary bent, would say it's very easy when you have your own internal conflicts and you're trying to work them out is to project this, especially upon those who seem to be extrinsic to your native indigenous culture. It's just, it's quite understandable. And as far as what he said when you ask him in general about well, why is society itself beginning to seem to break up? And he just said, well, people are no damn good. Uh, it's understandable why somebody with a limited view, limited education, uh, very unsophisticated, is what else are they going to say when you and I know, this guy would say to you, if you were smart enough to talk to him, he'd be smart enough to treat you this way. He'd say, when you and I know that beyond the individual level and the psychological, subconscious psychological traumas that drive one person to act in an untoward behavior, then when you multiply that and we start looking for what is driving psychological large numbers of people, you have to take into account how one segment of society perhaps is oppressed, not given another sector of society, the economic advantages, they have not made the right kind of opportunities available. Back to the car route. You didn't lose your place, did you? The one that nobody requested that I didn't go back and find, but it said that those in the city, that those people looking for psychological answers aren't really looking for answers. Now, that's no great major breakthrough compared to some of the things Kyrie's pointed out because if nothing else, if you're getting down to a good level, you should be to the point of realizing, let's take psychology as an art, a discipline, a true serious phenomenon, an important aspect of human life. It cannot succeed because anything that succeeds in a secondary world, which is all made from scratch, all, as a matter of fact, sort of pickpocketed. It's incest when it's only you and you playing. It's self-cannibalism. It is a secondary world reproducing itself. And so it cannot, whatever, it could be religion, it could be psychology, it could be weather forecasting, be peniology. And don't look in your pants, I'm talking about people in prison. <laughs> By whatever their definition, I don't care. Take their definition and they cannot succeed. Because to succeed would be suicide. So psychology, take it as a literal, serious, up-to-date, as good as any art, discipline, science, whatever you'd care to call it. Them looking for what makes people act like they do. And what they're looking for is something that can be described. That is a psychological. I can call it secondary. We can call it verbal. But it always gets to verbal. Because if lions were trying to play psychology with each other, any beast that did not have a primary, and in some way we're talking, we're having it both ways, that they actually got some kind of intellect, and yet they can't talk. If they were trying to psychoanalyze why certain lines are pushier, more aggressive than others, and why whole prides of lines that live down the road somewhere are giving us trouble, not just individually, but as a damn pride, the whole bunch of them are getting out of hand. Then if, if lines tried to take to get a psychological or sociological fix on the lions, it would be nonverbal. I know. Sometimes even I, I drive the best of you into a real teeny little corner in a dark closet. <laughs> All right, you're supposed to be looking for a psychological answer. Let me make it, uh, if it seems too obscure. The guy that I was making up, the guy, the uncivilized, unsophisticated person that you said, why do humans act like they do? And he's going to give you an answer that is worthy to basement dwellers. The people are no good. The guy's probably on drugs, probably a drunk, probably a foreigner, probably of a different religion than me, probably some other race, which is all beside the point. But it fits in because if he does that, then somebody from Harvard or Connecticut can come in and say, ah, so you're projecting, sir. You're saying just because this man looks like he's from another country, or you're saying because you could, he had a medal on here and it showed that he was a Presbyterian or a Catholic, you're now projecting your own, may I say, hang-ups, psychological problems. You're now trying to project it on other helpless, hapless, innocent people. And that's not true. We should be looking deeper into man, into the cause, the psychological cause of his behavior. That's what you're supposed to do. But there is no end to it. 
And as far as it's going to be an answer, such as, all right, I will call. I won't just call down the street and ask my uncle. I'm going to look in the phone book in the yellow pages under U.S. government, or wherever you look, under, where it would be, under the official local station that predicts the weather. Now, you know they can't predict the weather. But if they did, they'd be out of business. You're supposed to have faith in it. You're supposed to have a faith in psychology. And to say that those looking for psychological answers aren't truly looking for answers, it's back to what I was saying, that it's true and it's not true. At the secondary level, all you can do is look for psychological answers on a gradual scale. Because if you're not looking for psychological answers, you're probably in need of psychological help. Well, that is, you're simply uncivilized. If all of you had not fallen into this quagmire, if all of you were simply operating at the ordinary level of how you thought before you got involved with this, back at your own ordinary level, then anything, any problem in life, when you're operating at your best at that level, and someone asks you, or you ask yourself, well, why do people treat me this way, or why do people treat each other that way, the answer would be somewhere in the psychological realm. Or some of you, it might have still been religious. That we're still paying off debts for our past transgressions or insults to the gods, which is the same thing. In other words, people are doing something, but it has its causes in areas that are not obvious and are quite difficult for an untrained professional to even begin to get a grasp of, other than the fact the guy from Mississippi said, I'll tell you why people are like that. They're no damn good. <laughs> You know, I should know. <laughs> I should know. That will not do. If that was the answer, let's assume for a minute that that is an answer. Or what if it's the answer? What if that's the answer that people are no damn good? Or if that's not crude enough, what if the good Christian or Jewish, all of them, version that the reason when people are not acting right, the reason is they're sinners. Let's take that one. That's even better than they're no good. Let's assume that that's true. If things had stopped there, which is one of the night that Adam was pointing out when things went well, those of you didn't get that late breaking addendum on one of them, that when things are going well, Adam's already out of the garden by the time you hear him say, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> because if he didn't leave, he'd still be a sinner. If it was simply that people are what they are because they can't help it, that they're sinners or else, just according to the guy from Mississippi, that other theologian, he just says they're no good. If we'd left it at that, let's assume for a second that is the answer. Just think about it. That the answer is, people are no good. Okay. <laughs> now you're going to be waiting a long time to hear the little footy steps of progress marching. <laughs> I mean, if that's it, then you're going, you'll sit down under a tree and rot. <laughs> I guess develop some way to maybe carve interesting little... <laughs> Artifacts for the tourists out of your toenails or something. <laughs> if that's the answer, what are you going to do? It's simply nothing. Nothing would move. So, to make things move, you must look for psychological answers. But, back to the root of it being true and not true, if you're looking for psychological answers, not only are you not, the root went, those looking for psychological answers aren't really looking for answers. Put another way. Those looking for psychological answers aren't going to find answers, and that's why they're looking. That's why they're supposed to look. Now, I'm not saying the guy in Mississippi is correct, but even if he's correct, he doesn't know it, so it doesn't count. That is, a guy living in your basement, that he says, ah, screw this thing about psychological traumas. That guy cheated me out of money. Yeah. Don't tell me that someone, you know, he probably was abused as a child or his father, they were really strict about his toilet training. Now, in some way, he's trying to get even by withholding the money that he owes me. You know. Let somebody up the street believe that. I'll tell you why he did it. He's no goddamn good. <laughs> if that's it, what would happen? Nothing. There'd be no justice. There'd be no society. There'd be no legal system. There'd be no attorneys. <laughs> there'd be no used car salesman. There'd be no refund department. <laughs> that if it's simply, well, people are what they are because they're no good. Or people are what they are because it's what they are. Now, it sounds better to say, well, they're what they are because, and then you got something. You know, blank, because they sinned. 
because they're no good. But if you just say, well, people are what they are, I'll tell you why people are what they are. All right, why? Because that's what they are. No, I, I still don't hear the little feet steps coming on. The march of progress. No, I don't even hear the march of anything. It's just things sure are quiet in the garden, Adam. <laughs> Three thousand years later, we return to the scene. <laughs> Still pretty quiet, ain't it? Yep. That'd be it. So you got to look for psychological answers to explain human behavior. It is literally not true anymore for someone to say people are what they are because they're paying off sins that our forefathers uh, executed against God or Jehovah, Allah. That he is making us pay, and that's why people who have not come to see the truth of our religion or become a Catholic or a Jew or a Buddhist, that's why they're that way, and that's it. There are many people that still believe that. That drives that as a kind of energy transformation that drives many people on this planet, perhaps some of your relatives. But that is not who's at the head of the marching band of progress up here. That is now not enough in general. What is now more in line is a psychological theory of some kind, some kind of psychological profile that, well, and they will even, they'll probably grant the fact that those kind of stories about original sin, etc., was our own forefathers 2,000 years ago before we had the benefit of Princeton School, is that that was their own psychological projection making up these myths. And all it was was like a precursor of psychology. But now you have to look for some additional answer that men are not what they are because that that's what they are. All right, 5,000 years later. Still quiet? Not a thing. That's where we'd be. So you have to look for psychological answers to explain what's going on. But it will not because it's not supposed to. So if you're looking for psychological answers, you know, you're not looking. But you're not supposed to. But then for you, if you are still thinking psychological answers, you're not looking either. And you're now supposed to be an exception to you're not supposed to. <clears throat> now back to the one that was actually requested. And Kyrick said, genes are more important to those of a genetic disposition than anyone else. Now does it seem so silly? 7,000 years later. I thought I heard something. Yeah. And Eve went. <laughs> and Adam went, oh. Of course, under certain condition, I just made up another Cairo. I guess you could mistake <clears throat> from afar the sound of progress <clears throat> for too many anchovies. <laughs> There's a certain similarity. We're out of time, folks, in Mississippi and Calcutta and Connecticut and Goose Point. <laughs>